Hi, I'm Steve Richardson, and this is uh, the May 2018 episode of Lunch with a Lawyer. And today we're going to talk about uh, expungements in New Jersey uh, and uh, how they can help people uh, or help you uh, if you have something uh, in your past that's holding you back, uh, where you, uh, you can't get certain jobs, uh, security clearances, things like that. I had one client who was, uh, he wanted to get a gun permit, he was being held back because of a disorderly person's conviction he had on his record. Uh, so um, I try to provide general content on this show uh, that helps people uh, in a general legal sense or also helps them to reach uh, financial freedom since a lot of what I do is debtor creditor work. So we're going to talk about uh, expungements. Now, in New Jersey, not every crime can be expunged. There are a lot of them that are always going to be on your record. This is always going to haunt you, unfortunately. Um, so uh, we ha you're going to have to just deal with that. Uh, so uh, these crimes, let me just give you a rundown of those that you really can't, you, well, no, you out and out can't expunge. Criminal homicide. You kill somebody, that's pretty much going to haunt you the rest of your life, except death by auto. Uh, so if you got an automobile accident, you kill somebody, that is, that's something else. Kidnapping, uh, luring or enticing human trafficking, aggravated sexual assault, uh, aggravated criminal sexual contact, um, and the victim is a minor, it's criminal sexual contact. The victim and the minor and the offender is not the parent of the victim. Uh, criminal restraint or false imprisonment, robbery, arson and related offenses, endangering the welfare of a child by engaging in sexual conduct with, uh, which would impair or debauch the morals of a child. That's not something that is fungible. Endangering the welfare of a child, causing or permitting a child to engage in prohibited sexual contact, uh, sexual act, selling or manufacturing child pornography, uh, perjury or false swearing, knowingly promoting the prostitution of the actor's child, terrorism, producing or possessing chemical weapons, biological agents or nuclear or radiological devices, conspiracies or attempts to commit said crimes. So if you're as part of an overall plot to commit the crime uh, and uh, somebody else does it, you're pulled into that and that's also not expungible and also drug related crimes. So uh, that's, uh, those are not expungible. Now uh, you can certainly seek expungement uh, for crimes that are not on this list. Uh, and I'll get into a little later as to the basis as to why uh, the uh, expungement may be denied, even though initially you can apply for it, but we'll get into that in just a little bit. Um, now, also, uh, non-expungible crimes involving the sale or distribution of drugs, certain drug crime, uh, or possession with intent to sell, uh, cannot be expunged except marijuana, where the total quantity sold, distributed, or possessed with intent to sell with 25 grams or less, hashish, where the total quantity sold, distributed, or possessed with intent to sell was five grams or less, or any controlled dangerous substance provided that the conviction is of the third or fourth degree. Now in New Jersey, we have degrees of crimes, indictable crimes, first, second, third, or fourth degree. So it has to be a third or fourth degree. Where the court finds that expungement is consistent with the public interest, giving due consideration to the nature of the offense and the petitioner's character and conduct since the conviction. Now, this makes uh, the expungement that you seek for this a little bit more involved. The evidence is, a, is more detailed, uh, so it, it's a more involved process, but you may well be able to get an expungement for these crimes. Now, um, let's define our terms a little bit, okay? Uh, I, I'm going to talk about crimes, disorderly person's offenses, petty disorderly person's offenses, and local ordinances. Well, we pretty much know what local ordinances is. Uh, but you watch a lot of crime shows on TV, co uh, police procedurals, things like that. Uh, you've heard the terms of felonies and, and misdemeanors. Well, in New Jersey, we don't have felonies or misdemeanors. We have crimes, the equivalent of a felony. 
uh, and disorderly person's offenses and petty disorderly person's offenses, misdemeanors. So I'm going to be using New Jersey's terms throughout this discussion, but just to give you some context, that's, context, that's basically what it means. Uh, so crimes, let's talk about those first, uh, the felonies. Uh, I talked about what's excluded, but there are crimes that you can get expunged. Uh, now, uh, there are certain requirements uh, that you have to pass, and, and uh, part of the problem is with expungement and knowing whether you can get one is you have to navigate these certain rules and requirements to see if you qualify. Uh, well, first of all, it has to be at least 10 years from the date of conviction or the date on which the sentence was completed, whichever is later. So people can get jammed up. Well, I was convicted 10 years ago. Well, did you pay all the fines? Did you pay all the restitution? Did you, do, did you comply with all of the conditions and requirements uh, that were um, set forth as part of your criminal sentence? So you have to make sure you've completed all of them. Now, you may be able to get an accelerated expungement after five years if you have not been convicted of any subsequent offense. So that period of time may be shortened from 10 to 5, but there is a certain waiting period, and it has to be from the last, um, uh, last condition of, of the uh, sentence. You can't have more than one conviction of a crime. So one shot, one crime. You can't have more two disorderly persons or petty disorderly persons convictions. So no more than two misdemeanors on your record if you're trying to expunge a crime. A felony. Uh, you can't have a previous criminal or disorderly person's expungement. So you can't have had expunged of a felony or misdemeanor. You can't have any pending criminal, disorderly persons, or petty disorderly persons prosecutions or charges. No pending charges at the time uh, you, you are seeking this expungement. So everything has to be status quo. Uh, and there can't be any pending lawsuits involving the crime where New Jersey is a party. So uh, if you maybe have been convicted of a crime or you did the criminal aspect of it, but there's a civil component where New Jersey is, is bringing suit, uh, you can't have that uh, to get an expungement of a crime. Now, if you have a criminal and a, a disorderly person's conviction, only the crime can be expunged. Okay, you may have to go back later and then expunge the disorderly person's offense, but can't do both at the same time. Again, it gets complicated. Now, those are the crimes, the felonies. What about the disorderly person's offenses and petty disorderly person's offenses, the misdemeanors? Okay, with those, uh, it has to be at least five years. With crime, it's 10. With a disorderly person's, a petty disorderly person's offenses, the waiting of, uh, period is five years. And again, uh, that can be reduced to three years if you not have been convicted of any subsequent offenses. So there, you may be able to do it three rather than five. But again, there is a waiting period and you have to complete all the steps. You can't be convicted of any prior or subsequent crime in any state. Okay. You can't have more than three disorderly or petty disorderly person's offenses. So, you know, these are designed to help someone out who had a problems in their past, but they're not really a, a, a repeat offender. Okay, there's only so many times you can get in trouble with the law where they start saying, hey, wait a minute, you know, you can't wipe out the record. Um, you can't have a previous criminal expungement. You can't have any pending criminal disorderly persons or petty disorderly persons um, prosecutions or charges, like I said, with, uh, with the crime. Uh, and again, you can't have any uh, civil where you had uh, where the state of New Jersey is suing you in connection with the criminal uh, conviction. That also would bar an expungement. And you can't have any prior dismissals or of other charges through pretrial intervention, which is a program uh, for crimes where you can avoid, uh, it's a, it's a one-shot bite of the apple uh, diversion program, which I've talked about in prior episodes of Lunch with a Lawyer. Uh, but if that comes in, you know, you can't, have any prior dismissals through that program. And now you have up to three disorderly persons or petty disorderly persons convictions expunged. So a maximum of, of three, okay? Now, we've done crimes, disorderly persons, petty disorderly persons, felonies and misdemeanors. What about local ordinances? 
okay? You got in trouble in your community, in your town, you violated the local law. Well, you can expunge those too. Uh, but again, as the seriousness goes down, so do the requirements and waiting periods. So with a local ordinance, it has to have been at least two years from the date of your conviction or the date on which the sentence was completed. Same idea, just a different waiting period, two years. Uh, you can't be convicted of any prior or subsequent crime in any state. You can't have more than two disorderly persons or petty disorderly persons offenses on your record. And you can't have any pending charges. And again, the idea with the lawsuit with the state of New Jersey, same idea. Uh, so local ordinances are on there. And there's no limit on the number of um, convictions of local ordinances that you can get expunged. Uh, so that helps. And you can really do your expungement. The idea is that you must address everything. Okay, so if you go for an expungement, you have to address everything on your record. So sometimes, for some people, it's not just a crime, a disorderly person's offense, or a uh, municipal ordinance. It could be a combination, a mixture of those. So it can get involved, okay? And your application uh, for your petition for expungement can get involved. Uh, so that is an issue. But what happens if you're never convicted? You don't have any convictions on your record. You were arrested, but either the charges were dismissed or uh, you were found not guilty. Well, that arrest is still gonna sit on your record. And that was a question I got uh, from someone uh, that commented on the Richardson Law Office's Facebook page in connection with, uh, the, um, with this event, was asking whether these arrests show up on your record uh, if an employer pulls your record, and the answer is yes, it does, okay. So you need to be aware of arrests as well, not just convictions. Uh, so uh, here's the rule on arrests. Now, any person arrested for a crime, felony, disorderly, petty, petty disorderly person's offense, misdemeanor, or municipal ordinance violation where it was discharged without conviction uh, may apply for an expungement at any time after the disposition of the criminal proceedings. So guess what? No waiting period unless uh, the dismissal was through pretrial intervention for a crime or a conditional discharge uh, or dismissal for a, uh, a disorderly person's offense. So uh, it has to be at least six months from uh, the, uh, the time of the uh, dismissal that came about uh, as a part of that program. Um, now the dismissal, if the charges were dismissed, that dismissal cannot be as a result of a finding of insanity or diminished capacity. So, if you were arrested, you were charged, uh, but you avoided conviction as a result of an insanity plea or, or an incompetency or uh, diminished capacity as a defense, you can't get rid of the arrest. It's, it's still going to be there. Uh, if the dismissal was from a plea agreement, let's say you, you had several charges and they agreed to, to dismiss some charges but not others, um, then the dismissal, the arrest for the charge that was dismissed, cannot be expunged unless the underlying conviction has been expunged. So if you, uh, you were charged with A, B, and C, and they agreed to dismiss B and C, if you pled guilty to A, then the conviction on A has to be uh, expunged before you can get uh, an expungement on the arrest for uh, B and C. Uh, and you can't have, uh, there can't be any pending criminal disorderly persons or petty disorderly persons uh, charges. So if you're going to uh, get rid of that arrest, if you want to expunge the arrest, uh, there can't be any pending charges. And there can't be any, again, pending lawsuits of all in the state of New Jersey. That's always going to crop up no matter what. So you need to bear that in mind. Now, um, expungement after pretrial intervention is a bar to future expungement. Of convictions except for local ordinances so there's another little uh, a twist or pitfall that you need to bear in mind um, now there's some good news there's been some changes to this and this goes back to 2016 uh, with some changes in the expungement statutes uh, so going forward let's say you were um, in municipal court and the charges were dismissed you were found not guilty well there's a shortcut and a lot cheaper shortcut. If the municipal, the, if you were 
if the charges were dismissed. And it's best to do it, the, do it at the time. You're in municipal court, charges get dismissed. The judge must provide you upon request. So put that on your to-do list to ask for it. Upon request, with a, uh, they must provide you with the appropriate documentation to transmit to the superior court to request an expungement. A municipal court judge cannot expunge an arrest on the spot. Okay, but the idea is not to make you jump through the hoops uh, from this point going forward on arrest to ha and pay all sorts of money to a lawyer to have that arrest expunged if it was dismissed in municipal court. So uh, the judge can order, hey, clerk's office, provide him whatever paperwork he needs to fill out, to take the superior court to a judge to have them expunge it. Upon receipt of the documentation, the superior court must enter an order expunging all records and information relating to the person's arrest and charge. And there's no fee for this, okay? A regular expungement, there's a filing fee. There's no filing fee for this. And even better, Superior Court must forward a copy of the expungement order to the appropriate court and to the prosecutor. So they send it back to the municipal court, the expungement order, and to the prosecutor. And then the prosecutor must promptly distribute copies of the expungement order to appropriate law enforcement agencies and correctional institutions who have custodial and control over records, records specified in the order so that they can comply with the requirements. So everybody has to get notice of it because if they don't know about the expungement, they can't expunge the records. So if you do this yourself or through a lawyer and you're doing expungement, uh, you have to file the petition for expungement and then by certified mail that has to go out to a whole bunch of people. Then you have the hearing and let's say you win, the expungement is granted, then that expungement order then has to go out again to everybody by certified mail. Uh, and it, it's a lot of work and a lot of hassle uh, that you don't need under these circumstances because the prosecutor will take care of it. Um, and any expungement related to a dismissal, acquittal, or discharge, uh, a discharge order pursuant to this subsection this part of the, shall not be barred any future expungement. So there's no limit on it. Okay, so that's good. So it's quick and easy. You'll want to take care of that right away. You don't want to, a year or two later, oh, geez, I got to deal with this and may have to pay a lawyer to do it. So be proactive in that regard. Now, last month I talked about an, uh, a new program, uh, a veterans diversionary program. Uh, and I talked about regular desert, um, uh, where with pretrial intervention, uh, conditional discharge, conditional dismissal. Uh, but with the veterans program, you can end up with the charges dismissed, but the arrest is still hanging out there. What do you do with those? Well, as part of this new program with the Veterans Diversionary Program, uh, where the dismissal of an offense is based on an eligible service member's successful participation in a veterans diversion program, the county prosecutor, on behalf of the eligible service member, may move before the court for the expungement of all records and information relating to the arrest or charge and the diversion at the time of dismissal pursuant to this section. So you complete the Veterans Diversionary Program, you go before the court, the court dismisses the charges, the prosecutor can then ask for the expungement. Now it's may not shall, okay, so it's not a guarantee. You may still have to jump through the hoops. You may still have to do it yourself, but the prosecutor can do it on your behalf. Uh, so that's that's also an easier uh, hoop to jump through and a lot easier and a lot cheaper. Now, there's also another program. Uh, with New Jersey is something called drug court and you can go through where you're not a, you're not selling drugs, you're using drugs, you have a drug program, a problem, and New Jersey recognizes that and has a special court and a special program for that. Uh, and a special expungement process if you go through drug court. So, did you know about that? Because quicker, easier, cheaper, okay? So, uh, those convicted of a charge in drug court uh, are sentenced to a term of probation, all right? Uh, and they must undergo in order to complete the program. Got to go through the complete probation program. Once you've done this, once you've gone through the probation program and you have graduated from drug court, that's the term, uh, you're eligible for an expungement of all records and information relating to all prior arrests, detentions, convictions, and proceedings under the New Jersey Criminal Code. Wow. Okay. I just went through all the stuff all the different types and, and restrictions and little rules and everything else, this one, bam, okay. Um, now, 
in order to graduate, uh, you have to satisfactorily complete a substance abuse treatment program. So it's not just going through probation, okay? Uh, and not be convicted of a crime, disorderly person, or petty disorderly person's offense during that period of time when you're completing the other requirements. So if you're going through probation, you're completing the substance abuse treatment program, you can't go out and do something else, all right? Now, there are no waiting periods to go through this before applying. Uh, now, ordinarily, a certain period of time, as I said, there's a waiting period, but not in drug court. Um, now, you don't have to wait, but be aware of a couple things. Number one, not all crimes are subject to this expungement, and not everyone who graduates from drug court can benefit from a fresh start. So remember at the beginning, I talked about all those crimes you can't expunge. You still can't expunge them, okay? It's just of expungeable crimes, disorderly persons, petty disorderly persons offenses, and ordinances, not all those hoops that you need to jump through. Um, now, here's the real kicker, all right? You can lose your expungement if you're convicted of a crime after it, the expungement is issued. So uh, what happens is with an expungement, it, it goes off your record, but basically what they do is lock the file cabinet. They have records, they're still there, nobody's dropping it in a shredder, okay? Nobody's shredding your criminal record. They are putting it in a special file cabinet and they are locking the drawer, all right? So that if anybody comes in and says, has this person ever been convicted of a crime? Has this person ever been arrested? Okay, they can't unlock the file cabinet, okay? They, they can say, no, no they haven't, all right? Now, if you then try to get other expungements and things like that, they can unlock the file cabinet, look through the records, and see whether you qualify for this expungement based on prior expungements that are in that locked filing cabinet. So, like I said, an expungement is not a shredder, it's a locked file cabinet. All right, so if you get your expungement through drug court and you do something else, they'll unlock the file cabinet. So that's something to bear in mind. Once you're out, once you get your expungement, got to live a clean life after that. Now, as I said, there could be reasons to deny an expungement, all right? You may meet all the requirements I talked about. You, you, you've checked off everything on the list and you make your petition, but it could still be denied. How? Well, um, any of the prerequisites for expungement have not been met. All right, maybe you didn't check off all the boxes. Uh, there's an objection to the petition where the objector proves that the need for the availability of the criminal records outweighs the desirability of your being f freed from the black mark of the charge or conviction. All right. So there's some weighing going on. Okay. Nobody objects. You make an application. You don't. Okay. But if there's an objection, well, the court has the discretion of, of weighing this out. Should I? Should in view of this, of this objection to your expungement, still expunge your record. Uh, where it is an arrest, uh, where it is an arrest not resulting in conviction, where the acquittal, discharge, or dismissal of the charges, or as a result of a plea bargain involving conviction of other charges. We mentioned that, um, or I mentioned that. So there's that. Where the arrest or conviction is associated with a civil suit brought against you by the state or any of its agencies. Again, uh, going back to the earlier requirements. Um, uh, where you've had previous criminal conviction expunged unless you're seeking expungement of an ordinance violation or an arrest not resulting in a conviction uh, or you've had a prior um, or subsequent to the conviction been granted the dismissal of other criminal charges following the completion of a supervisory treatment or other diversionary program. Now all of this, there's all sorts of articles and, and uh, content on my website that lays all of this out. I realize I'm throwing out a lot at you at once, uh, a lot of information to you at once, um, but that that's it. Now, I'm also going to put a link in the comments to this video on Facebook, and, and this video is also going to go out to my YouTube channel at richardsonlawofficers.tv, and I'll put it in the description below the video, this link. I have a, a quiz, an online quiz that you can take on my website that navigates you through all the rules I talked about. Yes or no questions that'll step you through. So click on that link, go to that page, take the quiz, okay? 
And if you go through and you say, congratulations, it's, it's worth pursuing a, uh, an expungement, uh, then you can certainly reach out to uh, an attorney to handle that for you. Uh, someone that's in your area, if you're in the South Jersey area, feel free to contact me. Uh, but at least you have an idea before you even talk to an attorney, is this going to work? Uh, now, you may get to the end of the quiz and they might say, no, no, I don't think it's going to. You may well be denied. Don't let that discourage you. It's an online quiz. All right. It, it, it will, it, and at the very least, it's identified issues that you may have. So you go to talk to the lawyer and say, look, I took your quiz, but I, I, I stumbled on this problem. Uh, it, it's saying that this could be a, a, a stumbling block to an expungement. Uh, what do you think? So don't let that be the last thing. Don't take that quiz that says there's a problem and you just give up. Don't. It's just an online quiz. It's just to help there to help you, guide you through all the uh, rules and conditions and sort of identify the issues for you. Uh, so don't be too discouraged there. Take the quiz. And I'll also try to leave some links to other articles uh, on my website that talk about what I've talked about today. Now, I mentioned there were a couple uh, uh, questions that were raised. Uh, I mentioned the one about arrest records coming up on employer searches. Yes, they do. That's why there is a pr uh, procedure for uh, expunging uh, an arrest. Um, now, someone had, there was a, do crimes uh, like drunk driving, well, drunk driving is not a crime in New Jersey, it's a motor vehicle offense, but uh, if someone was hurt, okay, as a result of this drunk driving, and that could lead to a criminal conviction, would that criminal conviction, that person being hurt as a result of a drunk driving charge, can that be expunged? Well, if it's considered uh, death by auto, uh, it, where they died, maybe they just injured, but actually died, then it may well be expungible. Um, uh, this person was asked a question. Was a, a conviction in Pennsylvania, and I really I can't address that because I'm not licensed in Pennsylvania. I don't know what their Pennsylvania expungements rules are. But in New Jersey, I think at least it would be worth talking to uh, an attorney about this to get a little bit more information what the charge specific charge was, uh, and whether that would necessarily be a bar uh, to an expungement under those circumstances. Uh, the other question was: Is a false police statement expungible? Well, I mentioned one of the crimes you can't expunge uh, is a perjury or false swearing. All right, well, that's where you're under oath. You know, promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth. All right, you're either under oath, you're testifying in court, or you signed an affidavit where you're swearing on paper to the truth of it, uh, where you're under some sort of oath. That's what they're talking about. With a false police statement, um, that may not be barred. Uh, I would not. I, I would encourage uh, the person asked the question, or if you have that question, to talk to an attorney about this because you may still be able to expunge it. Um, worth a shot. So I wouldn't necessarily give up. It's certainly worth pursuing. So those are the questions I had online, uh, and I don't see any. Um, posts or comments here on the Facebook Live uh, as to any specific questions. Uh, Lisa, if you, I, I'm assuming you don't have any questions since you haven't posted any, uh, but uh, that's it. So that's it for this episode of Lunch with a Lawyer. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, if you uh, uh, liked the video, please click like. If you love it, please click love. And if you think someone might benefit from it, Share it on your wall. Click share. Say, hey, this was in some interesting content. If you don't feel comfortable sharing it or sharing it with a particular person, because I understand the sensitivity of this, all right, uh, you may not want to share. Say, hey, Joe, uh, take a look at this video on expungements. I know you're trying to get rid of that criminal record. <laughs> not something you necessarily want to post on someone's wall. But you can share it on Facebook Messenger. It can be a private share. So I'd encourage you uh, that if you find this uh, if it was useful to someone that might benefit from it, share it on Facebook Messenger. But share it in general if you want to. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please click thumbs up. That helps with the algorithm to get this out to as many people as possible. Uh, the likes uh, as well. It's, and finally, 
if you are um, if you are interested in the content on my uh, on my YouTube channel uh, I publish other videos in addition to lunch with a lawyer every month and you want to subscribe just click that subscribe button uh, but as for now that's it for lunch with a lawyer I'll see you next month